Greetings everybody, welcome back to the basement. And this is the latest project, which I'm afraid I've started without you. <clears throat> it's a Westinghouse flat screen TV, and the problem with it is it has no power. None at all. It's been this way for a couple years, and I decided now is the time to do something about it. Because you gotta make sure something's really a problem before you really just start diving in trying to fix it. And a couple years is probably enough time, so... Anyway, I did start this without you, <clears throat> but I haven't done a lot. <clears throat> I've taken off the, the base of it, which required taking off this cover plate first, which was just kind of reaching underneath and prying it up. I will show you more about that as it goes back together. And it will go back together. Or it'll go in the trash and you'll never see this video. Uh, following that, I took out, I believe it was six screws, which are now in that box. And I've taken off the bezel on the front. The Then, finally, I've disconnected four wires from this board down here that rests on the side. It's connected via a shiny ribbon cable to the back of the screen here. And there are four little plugs that go into it. One there, one there, one there, and one on that edge. So that's where it stands so far. Uh, I suspect there's a capacitor or two down inside that's bad on the power board. I've never done this before, by the way, but that's my suspicion. Next step is to take out two screws on this edge and two screws on this edge that hold the screen fast. And we'll come back in just a minute when we're at that point. Okay, let's take out some screws. Yeah, this isn't exactly uh, riveting entertainment, but it's all part of the job, so maybe I'll edit it out. Always important to have a box or a cup or something to put your screws in, and since I've got numerous coffee cups that I have acquired, and I don't drink coffee, might come in handy for such a, such things. Favorite screwdriver too, by the way, but I'm one of the favorites because it's magnetic. And for stuff like this, you don't drop your screws down inside so much. It also helps to hold screws for you while you um, when you're putting them back in. So you can get yourself lined up a lot better. So. Four screws. With any luck, Ta the whole screen lifts out. It's about this time. It'd be nice to have a towel or something to put down so I can flop the monitor over better. Hang on, I'll go see what I can find. Okay. Found a towel. Now, it's my understanding that the ribbon cable needs to come out. I'd imagine it needs to come out up here. Well, no. No. No, I'm thinking down here. Uh, here's where it's the most loosest. Get the 
some mark on the, that just in case. It's free. Now, if not free, then reasonably priced. Well, I tell you what, I'll leave that alone for the time being. Get one end of it free. That's my understanding. This back part is only held on by the aluminum tape. This is a job for the forceps. Since this is riveting, we'll be back. Okay. Got progress on this side. I did just kind of take the forceps and gently came along here and pulled back. So the tape is still secured to the back of the monitor here. However, the cage that goes around it, any tape that was tacking that on, has been pulled back. So I think we're going to leave the rest of this, this where it's at so we know that the board with the buttons and all the wires will line up properly. Because really we just want to get what's inside. We do still have one more section of... Um, of tape. Now yeah, I guess this side and that side both have tape that need to come off. But again, just pull off a little bit around there and leave the rest. I am concerned about the these connectors here. <clears throat> just for my own benefit. Left one blue and black. Next one red and yellow it looks like. Next one, gray and black. This one, red and yellow. And I'm going to again try to use the forceps to take these out. Just get a hold of them a little bit and then wiggle, grabbing by the plastic and not the wires. Take a look and see if you can actually see this. Yeah, it looks like you should be able to. The, um, if you don't have forceps, which I'm sure most people don't, uh, they're one of those handy little things. From time to time, they also lock in place so that you can open them and latch them. Needle nose pliers would probably also work in such a situation. It appears to have come out a little bit, but not enough of a bit. So while I play with this, again I'm going to pause things. Back. It's like the old saying goes, sometimes the simple approach is the best. I've got the right plug out and I'm just using a pair of regular pliers. Um, it's a flat surface on either side of the plug and it's sticking out just enough that you can get a grip, wiggle, and there it is.
while ago. You guys wait over there. Yeah, that gives you the most surface area for gripping onto the, the plugs. And we'll just attempt to leave them right where they're at. Because the original manufacturer's tape is still holding them down. Well, that should be good enough. We've got a little bit of this tape to get up. So, try to pull it back a little bit on the corner and peel it the rest of the way from there. It's always right after I pause these things I start making progress, but I was able just to get my finger behind it and pull gently and lift things up. As you can see, the cage appears to be coming loose. It's still being held down on this side. What's holding it? Yeah, our tape over here is kind of falling back down. It reestablished itself. Yeah. But it looks like this is all that's left that's holding it on still. So I just need to get this back. Interesting that they would have relied on tape to uh, hold this down. And tape does need to come loose because this ribbon cable goes on in and is still attached. Never lift the, the cage up all the way to get at the boards inside. I suppose it was for the best that they secured the uh, ribbon cable. But uh, normally a TV doesn't get jostled, or jost jostled, moved around all that much, maybe during shipping. Okay, the back side is free. Yeah, maybe not free, but at least reasonably priced. Ha! <laughs> and tip your waitress. Good night, everybody. And there you have it. I suppose I don't need to mark this because this little ribbon cable, the only place it can go is over there in that green board. So now comes the next fun part. That is taking out the boards because the uh, one we want to get to, I believe, is further on down. You gotta check one thing. I'll be right back. Okay, those have gone long. So now we have four more screws on the left board. 
quite sure what's securing the, if these are plugged into anything. It's always easier taking things apart than it is getting them back together, so the real fun may still be ahead. Pardon my, me for wearing a shirt with holes in the sleeves and elbows, but it's a cold night and I'm not going anywhere. So no one other than me and you are seeing this. Okay, four screws on the left board, which okay, it's got to be attached to somehow. Back edge is free. The front edge seems to be secured to something. I'm going to have to play around with this to see what it is that's holding it on. So, again, I'm going to pause things. A couple of things worth mentioning. Um, it appears that both boards won't come out unless they're both unscrewed at the same time. They have to come out together. There's also, looks like on the back side, there... There's one screw here, two, uh, two mounting posts there, a couple more screws there that need to come out because that section is secured to the end. So it would be a good idea to have the nut driver, small nut driver, uh, 3 16 it would appear. Uh, for those guys. And this one needs to go. another one here between these uh, RCA jacks. So out it comes to and these two have to go. I feel it in my bones. On earth, but they let you take, make you take all the other ones out. They let you leave those in. All for one, and one for all. Okay, that is all of those. So how does it feel? Guess is we do have the power plug on this other long side. Aha. You kind of have to pull out on the case just a little bit so that the power plug can get free. Yeah. And it should be this board here with the power plug that I'm interested in. Yeah, and these guys. So we're going to tilt it out this way with the that long way. Interesting about this 
ribbon cable on the back side. We have to see how it goes. If it comes out okay or if it's going to be a hang up point. Think to have the edge of this board out just a little bit more. So it doesn't hang up on it. And since I don't know how those two boards are connected together, we're going to try to uh, be gentle with them so that they stay together. There's definitely something down on this one end that's it makes it feel like they're connected there, and I don't know what that is. Maybe if I can push these guys in. I know this is probably drifting off camera. Maybe I'll just pause things till I can figure it out. I don't know. Ah, there we go. Aha. So it's this little ribbon cable here. I think it's okay. I may have to look back at the video to see how it was actually connected in. I believe the blue edge was up. But I think I see the problem. This board here, the one with the power connector, aha, this is how these boards were connected there. They're connected that way with that plug. See what I'm, if I can show you this properly. Hopefully it focuses. Power plug up here. The appears to be a capacitor here, which is kind of the one from what I read I was suspecting was wrong. It's definitely bulged. Looks like it's leaking a bit. So it's a 2200 microfarad 10 volts so that's what I need to get so anyway I'd say that is our problem from what I can tell the other capacitors on here look like they're okay don't see any fuses on here, but uh, definitely that capacitor was a problem. I assume the uh, it's my first time doing this. Did I mention that? So anyway, I'm going to try to get a replacement capacitor, and because uh, I don't have one, so I guess we'll pick up the video after that. So. Stay tuned. Okay, welcome back. It's been a couple days. I believe it was a Thursday night. Yeah, probably Thursday night when I recorded the last segment. Today is Tuesday. And since then, I've placed an order for this. Ordered some capacitors from DigiKey. Just came in the mail today. So, right now we're going to take this guy off. I see where I'm, uh, where you're at on the camera. This one down here in the corner. This is the bad one. Bad capacitor. And, just so we know, that's not going to be off that long. The outside. Outside here, is negative. That's where the negative marking is. The, the 
the leads go the other way. Well, no, they don't. It's hard to tell from the top. But the leads, leads go up and down the short length of the board right here, which matches up with the gray marking that says negative on it. So, first thing we're going to do is take off the old capacitor. So, iron's been warming up here for a few minutes. Camera. So we will just heat this guy up. Now it's loose. And uh, loosening a little bit at a time. Each leg pulling. Somewhere around here is my solder sucker. I may have moved it over by the desk. I've been transitioning things off of the desk, off of the workbench, onto the desk where I had more room. Didn't get the soldering iron set up over there yet. So hold on one second while I go back and check. Well, kids, no dice. No solder sucker either. So let this be a lesson to you. Always put your toys away when you're done with them. My problem is I'm never done with them, so I never put them away. So we're going to do this the old-fashioned way. We have the we have this out. One of the holes is fairly open. What we are going to do we're going to, we're going to pretend like we have the solder sucker. I'm just going to. No, I'm not going to do that. Don't do that, kids. It's not safe. I said, do as I say, not as I do. So we're just going to move this up again. If the solder is hot enough, we're going to Let's get out one of our brand new capacitors. We only need one. I ordered four just because shipping <coughs> shipping was enough that I didn't want to I didn't want to run the risk of like, oh, there's something wrong with it. I need to order a new one. There's something or I put it in backwards and blow it up. I need a new one. Now I gotta wait a few more days. More shipping. I mean, the price of the capacitors was uh, pretty reasonable, I'd say. It was about 50 cents a piece, I think. Uh, killing a little bit of time, I turned my soldering iron down. Uh, four of them for 224. And so, uh, a little over 50 cents a piece. 56 cents a piece. For those of you. I like doing math in your heads. For those of you who don't like doing math in your heads, it's still 56 cents a piece. So, we're just gonna, I just want a couple of holes in here to make sure I can get the leads through. So, we're, we're There. 
we don't need no stinking cider suckers. Cider suckers. 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 Eight. If you had more than one cider sucker, would it still be a cider sucker, or would it be a cider sucker? -er? Er. Anyway, those are some of life's great questions. You probably can't see it from way back there. Even if I held this up, you couldn't see it. There is a little plus down here on the on the main board itself. So we'll put our longer lead through there. Put our shorter lead through the one that I kind of mark with the sharpie as the negative. Kind of pushing on that, bend our leads out just a touch so that they stay in place. I had something that's about a quarter of an inch thick to put under there to kind of hold the thing up. And something a little bit more than a quarter of an inch to hold the other side up. Okay, that's nice and secure. Get some solder. The sound you hear is the sound of a cat clawing in the litter box right behind you. Also, tin or iron just a little bit. Lighty, lighty, lighty. right. Well, the cats can get his paw down in the dirt to bury his, his waste. And everyone comes to paw on the side of the box. job of soldering. I do say so myself. Let's clean this up. Ken, if you're watching, I'm still learning to solder. My friend Ken is great at soldering. Where is he right now? He's probably at home working on his own projects. Okay. That looks a little bit better. Let's uh, check our work, check continuity, and make sure that so. Did get negative on the negative side. Isn't this riveting entertainment? I got a bit of excess solder that needs to go away. If only I had a solder sucker, that would be. Sucker? Sucker. Still, I can just say so long, sucker. There. That is about as good as I think it's going to get. So, having looked it over, we'll 
nip off the leads. If it's not good, I've got three more capacitors. So anyway. That's it for the soldering portion of the video. <coughs> I suppose it wouldn't hurt to check the value of the capacitor. Since we've come this far, be shame to put the wrong value in there and have it blow up or... Not accurate. 2200 microfarad 10 volt. And our old one, I believe I said last time. 2200 microfarad 10 volt. So here's our bad one. Okay, let's go back to the desk. Soldering iron is off. Lights off. Okay, we're back at the desk. Hopefully. I do say, hopefully, this will be the easy part of things. Now, we have to... We, we don't have to, but we should put this back together so that it goes in with both boards together, because we have six little pins on the edge of this one that match up with six little pins on the socket of this one. And together... They yeah, try holding the two boards out at arm's length, trying to plug them in when you wear bifocals. Just so the camera can see them. And, you know, the power connector down here on, on the left side has to go through the hole over here. And these guys probably should go in first on the right side because they have to come through the holes for the RCA jacks. So, and the whole board thingy needs to be... I'm sorry if you, this is all going to be where you can see it so easily. This should come out through the top. And these guys, this board needs to be up above. You know, on paper, this all looks so nice and straightforward and easy. Practically, sometimes these things can be a pain. So, but it's cheaper than buying a new TV, and something else I'm sure, but I can't think of what that might be right now. Oh, it's rewarding! Yeah, it's rewarding. Let gravity help us out here a little bit. Or not. Come on, get it. You need to be... Probably not time for the phone to ring. Aha! Gravity was our friend. Ta da! Okay, we've got our RCA jacks coming out through the side. Before we screw down our screws from the top, it'd probably be a good idea to put our little Uh, threaded nutty thingies for the cables for any VGA monitors or HDMI that you're plugging into this thing. Try 
that one first. For what it's worth, that top one is pulling the rest of it one further out. One further out. Welcome to Dave's House of Grammar. That's got to be a screw. That is a screw. Well, screw it up is what I say. But we got the, the wrong thing in there. I thought we had more. I guess not. But since it's kind of holding it in place, we'll put another screw in. Just for now to help secure things. Grab another screw. This is why I like the magnetic screwdriver. You're not fishing around with your fingers trying to, to find things. It gets it right, right away. And it doesn't drop it when it's not quite right. Question is. fine threaded or not. I think they are. But I tell you what, I'm gonna Yeah, that seems to want to go. It's gotta pause the recording, but this is pretty interesting, isn't it? that guy out because it's not really in there very it's not not at all. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Since this is kind of slow going, I want to pause recording for the time being. Hang on. Okay. <clears throat> I almost have all these guys in. There's one more left to do. Fine threaded for here and here for the VGA and HDMI. Coarse threaded for just holding the rest of the, uh, the board in. And I do have it standing on end. It kind of helped out with screwing the, um, the uh, little post in for the, for the VGA because the board set back just enough in there that I couldn't push on them when I was trying to go at it from the side so I let gravity hold it down and I just used the nut driver to turn the nut. It tightened up and pulled itself up. It's tight and secure now. And guess what? I found my solder sucker. You know where it was? Right next to the soldering iron. Good grief. Oh, good grief, good grief. That's where that goes. This probably did come out the side. Now's the time to figure out where uh, everything went. So. Still got to put the screws back in for the board here. Just looking at well, we'll we'll deal with the connections in one second. Hang on, I will screw them in. We'll come right back. Okay, all of the screws are on the board, and I had just the right amount. How about that? I didn't lose any. I didn't have any extras. So, um, let's see if we can remember which way was up this thing. And one thing we know, we know for sure, that this has to go this way because 
these guys. All line up over here. So plug them in. I tell you, they go back in a whole lot easier than they came out. But I suppose once you get the hang of <coughs> the way to do it, taking them out, if I was doing this every day, I'd probably be a lot faster and better at it. But I don't do it every day, and I don't want to do it every day. And these are the buttons that go to the side panel. So now, back piece. Tape was all that was holding it down. Seems a bit odd. But really, all it needs to do is hold it down long enough. thing reassembled because it's not I wouldn't say it's exactly supporting any weight yeah. this needs to come down this way I'm just going by the lines of where I don't know if I call it dust lines scratch lines line in the sand It's probably okay that way. And these is okay the other way. So what do you say? Don't have any other foil tape. And you know what? Radio shacks are closing up left and right. So I probably couldn't run out and buy it. So I'd have to order some more and I'd have to wait. And it's something DigiKey probably stocks. They stock just about everything in the world. It would seem. But, like I said, this only needs to hold it in place long enough for us to get this assembled. So we know this is the bottom, so I'm pretty sure that. Okay, you're second guessing yourself now, Dave. Don't do it. Okay. Yeah, power cord would come down and out. Okay, but the good news is we've got the back here, and it's all recessed. <laughs> Those cat fur get in here in the last week. Cats are good at that. So anyway, we are going to... it in. I'm going to put it on, turn it upside down, and gently lay it in. That felt like it should go. And we'll use our towel to help lift this whole mess up and turn it over.
Anyway, I gotta figure this out where the board goes. So hey, I gotta answer the phone. Hang on. Okay, I'm back. Um, and now I have it. The only thing I did what, that you weren't here was where this ribbon cable comes out. I when I turned it back over, peeled back the tape, lifted up on the metal cage, and lifted up on the metal cage so I could. And there was lots of slack in the cable here. So I was able to slide it down because it's going to need to come in between a couple of the spacers here so it can fit down into the groove. So that is right. However, there's another ribbon cable that I did not address that needs to be addressed, whatever it is. So, I may well get the chance to show that to you anyway. Because it's one that I never plugged back in after we did this. So, spread the towel out again. Actually, do it this way. The towel goes up the monitor. with the speaker wires to the top, flip it over, and now this should lift off the speaker wires. That's another thing I dealt with that you didn't see. The speaker wires getting underneath the monitor. There's another little ribbon cable. Came in here. As I recall, it was blue. That's still inside. It does not appear to be inside. Where did it come from? It came from down here. From this. Hang on a second. I need to recheck some video. See, that's. Why well, it's a good idea to record these things. You can, you know, it never hurts to take videos or or make pictures of things. This is the ribbon cable that I was talking about. Short little guy, and since the blue part goes in back here, this the last I took out. Maybe it should be the first to go back in. Looks like the way it was when I took it out. This is going to be way interesting. But how it's going back in. Tell you what, this, uh, let me shut off the camera again until I figure it out. Okay, I think I figured it out. Question is, getting it, all these little pins lined up. So that feels like it's... I pushed it in, in as far back as it can go, and left to right it doesn't do anything. There's like this bar that comes down and appears to snap it in place. Now assuming that everything lined up okay, that guy is alright now. Now the other end of it an 
my big fingers in here. Just kind of line it up and push is the idea that I'm going for. So this one does seem to have like a little plastic <coughs> thing on the end. It'd also be nice if it had a uh, clamp down bar like the one on the other side of it, but it doesn't appear to be. However, it did appear to slide right in. I guess the proof will be, as they say, in the pudding. Didn't know we had pudding tonight. Who doesn't love pudding? Right? Right. So, um... You do the big flip again. It needs to come over, it's not quite in place. That ribbon appears to have enough room. There we go. That wasn't anything behind, it was just... Okay, I have watched the video and I was taking the, uh, showing you what I had done so far, which I didn't have on video. Um, I could definitely tell that the black and white wires came down to this end and the red and black ones came to this end. Now, it's interesting here because we have those are each two pins, and these are three pin connectors. And they both have red, white, and black. <clears throat> Based on the relative lengths, that could be hard to stretch that one all the way over there. I'm going to say that this one probably goes into here. If it's not, <clears throat> Well, I guess we'll see what happens. Put that in there. They at least fit. So now, are we ready? Are we ready for the smoke test? I had, right here it is, a power connector. <coughs> Because other than putting the case back together, all the electronics should be hooked up. So it should work. If it's going to work, it should work now. It should be able to work now. How's that? So. Power cable is in there. The other end, we'll plug in over here. Power strip's not on, but it is now. You hear the hum because I have those junky old speakers there. There is a blue light. I will take that as a good sign. I'm thinking the bottom, this appears to say power out AV. What do you know? 
I think we have us a working TV because we never got this before. You, you can kind of see a blue screen when I hit the power thing because we'd never gotten this far before because before it did nothing. So I guess the final step is to turn off these, turn that off because I'm tired of the hum. I had my iPod hooked up to it the other day. I was listening while I was working on some other stuff down here. We will slide these wires down behind the monitor if we can. Might have to go around this way. But the little button board here is going to have to pull this one out so we can get the black wires behind it because it's being annoying. Not going to go where I want it to go. So pull that down. Hopefully we'll never have to see these again because it will all stay working for a long time to come. pain where it was. It could be a pain somewhere else now. In fact, I think we're also going to get that one down behind that. Going to, the ribbon cable is going to slide in the slots. That's going right in there, just like it looks like it should. Front case goes in here, and it looks like all of the. Oh. Sorry, I'm getting the cart before the horse. We have, still have screws left. Yeah. Need to. Uh, I think those were the screws. One, two, three, four. Nope, these are the screws. So, so we need to secure the monitor to the plastic in the frame. said that, I'm going to have to take that button board out so I can get to where the screw needs to go. But that's not a big deal. Separate those guys. Grab one with that. Tell you, it's. I've never done this before, but uh, it's amazing what you can learn on YouTube. So hopefully somebody learns something from this. See, so it's a real do-it-yourself job, and by that I mean, don't call me, do it yourself. No, uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But all the same, I'm not going to give you my phone number. Uh, there we go. So. Monitor secured to the to the sides. I'll put the 
for it. Bezel on. Making sure there's no cat fur left behind. I mentioned I got a couple cats. I do. They mean well. They're fun to have around. And Get all of these tabs on the back side of the monitor. Snap, snap, snap. Feels like the buttons are pushing on things. I'm gonna disconnect the power plug there. Now, I've got some screws to put back on. I thought there was a screw under here. If you listen to Ben Heck, he says that a lot of times they hide screws under the labels. Not in this case. That's okay, I still have Ben. He does a lot of cool stuff. Stuff I'm never going to do, most likely, but I can uh, still enjoy watching him do it. And for one thing, I don't have nearly the time on my hands. That I have a job I have to go to. I'm sure he he's a nice guy. So anyway, this is the part I didn't tell you, but I did without you before. Um, get one screw in here to hold this down. This is the, uh, the stand. There are, I believe, what is it? I wanted to say six screws that hold this on. Um, we'll see where we're at. So I know we can put four in on the back part here. I think there's, I think those are just plastic tabs, I don't think anything goes down the side of them. Okay, two down, looks like two, a bunch more to go. It's going to be really interesting. See if we have any leftover parts. One thing I've never uh, noticed about this TV, in case I didn't mention it, it's a Westinghouse model SK19H210S. It's in Sam. Um, apparently, it's got Visa mounts on it. Not that I've got any plans to to mount it on a, an arm or anything like that at the moment. But, it looks like they're there. Okay. All right, okay, all right, okay. All right. Up tight, all right, now sight. What kind of screws do we have left? Well, I think we are gonna have one that goes nowhere. <laughs> Oh. Are these the visas? Those in there before? I didn't video this part. I think I mentioned that. No, those did not go there. Take that one out in a second. At least I'm pretty sure it doesn't go there. Does it go here? That would be much more likelier. Because I don't, if, as I recall, it didn't have any um, screws for the visa mounting, but they were just there. So let's t 
take this one out. So I guess I'm going to do that part. If I ever decide to mount it on an arm or a wall bracket or something like that, then we'll uh, get screws at that time if the bracket itself doesn't already come with them. this one on here. Got two little screws. I, like I don't know where they went. Maybe somewhere inside. However, we still have one more piece. I'm just laying around. Oh, here it is. This piece here. Probably stand this up at this point. And it'd be easier for you to see that it goes there, but it's harder for me to see how to get it on. So I will sh show you in one second. I'll line up, that lines up. And just to make sure everything is everything, as you know, things have a way of stopping working once you get it all put back together. Here's our TV. Power strip is on. We have a blue light down there. And we have a picture. Hot dog. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. The remote is way over on the other side of the room, but all it took was one capacitor, and the hardest part was taking the whole thing apart so we could get to it. So, anyway, hope you've enjoyed this. It's something a little bit different. It's not a video game. It's not an, a um, microcontroller or a Raspberry Pi project or anything. It's not a pinball machine, but it's something we can all can do. It's just a capacitor. So anyway, next time you got a TV set that's not working, what do you got to lose? So anyway, thanks for watching. Be sure and subscribe. Talk to you later. Bye.